if the last days began from the that time, it means now we should be closer to the end of the last days. Right? Is that true? Is that true? So, there are many other things we saw even in the apostolic regime and after them that we are seeing in the church today. But the man of God is advising us that these are last days. And in those last days, we need to watch out not just in the world, but we need to watch out in church. The second reason why I believe he's talking to people in church is because he said they, they will also have a form of godliness. Take me back, I think, two verses to verse 4. Verse 5. All the people that he mentioned that will be boasters, proud, deceiving women, and all that. He says, these people too, they will have a form of godliness. It means they will be coming to church, they will wear, when we wear suits, they wear suits. When we wear senator, they wear senator. They will look like they are serving God. But they will deny the power thereof. Number three reason, according to the scripture, is that the Bible also says that they will come for Bible studies. Verse 6. I think verse 6 says, is it 6 or 7? Take me to verse 6. Verse 7. It says they will be, when, when we start Bible study, they will come and sit. They will always learn, but will never be able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Praise the Lord. Now, why I'm bringing this scripture is so that I can prefer, I can bring admonition to us, all of us. The world that we live in currently has enough problem. Enough problem from every angle. From the physical angle, from the spiritual angle. In fact, they have made it difficult for us to be Christians. Very difficult. If you turn on your Facebook app now, and maybe maybe go through the reels and you're able to go through 50 reels 45 of the reels are reels that appeal to sex 40, if not 48 or 49 praise the lord i don't know if i'm correct but maybe my own reel is different <laughs> from your own reel there is this compulsion the world is now designed in such a way principalities seem to be working overboard. The assignment of a principality is not just to come down and force people to live in a certain way. The assignment of a principality is to go to the very place where the culture of the people is shaped and begin to influence culture. It means some things that were not normal before gradually we start becoming normal. Not because um they are now normal, but because there is a shaping in culture, there is an information of culture, we are going to get to a point where it becomes difficult for people to say that this is bad and this is not bad, because we are in between the lines. There is an argument of recent. A lady rose up in a church circle and confronted the preacher during the question and answer session. And he told the preacher that abortion is not wrong. Praise the Lord. And then she also had her claims. She said that the abortion right is, is as against her right of being a woman. That she doesn't want to have a child. And the baby is not yet a child. We should respect her decision, respect her will. She wants to serve God better. She wants to be able to sing in the choir. She, that that will be a burden and the, the Bible teaches we should lay aside every weight. <laughs> uh, what she's not telling us is that the Bible also says flee from every appearance of evil. If There will be no need to lay aside that weight if she was not trespassing in the first place. Because you cannot get pregnant if fan blows on you. You can't say you're under the fan and then you now got pregnant. It's only Mary that has done that before. And it was by the power of the Holy Spirit. So the sister must have been trespassing. And then the church is not actively addressing that matter of trespass. And because we are beginning to create room for that matter of trespass, we are indirectly creating room for other problems. This is what happens with sin. Whenever you begin one step, the other ones are eventually going to open up. If we come and preach, for instance, that the Bible says, thou shalt not commit adultery, 
that that's what the Bible says. That the Bible did not speak against fornication. You know, there are all manner of unreasonable arguments, even in church. And then we are considering, should we accept it? Should we not accept it? And we progress to now say, just in case there is fornication. Is the baby a real baby? It was not a mass of blood. And I wish I was there to bring solution to the problem. Because this, the preacher doesn't seem to do sufficient justice the way I would have wanted it to be done. My question would have been, at what point is the mass of blood dead? Does the mass of blood have life? You say it's not a baby, yes. What is it? Whatever it is, does it have life in it? If we agree, if you say it doesn't have life, how does it eventually grow to become a baby? And if you say it has life, why waste life? There are several arguments and we are accommodating these things small, 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 and it's causing a lot of issues. These are the assignments of principalities to shape culture, to shape the mind of people. And with time, we start accepting what before now we are not accepting right so it's normal in our community now for 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 people to be forced to think in a certain way yes even if you prayed for 35 hours in your room and you came out and by chance you walk three feet in by this time you will still need the blood of jesus to cover your eyes again and your mind this is you going about your own business but the way the, the, the whole system is structured in such a way that even if you stay in your room, we come to your room. We can market it. We can bring iniquity to you wherever. Iniquity is everywhere you go. These are the jobs of principalities. So a brother can be struggling or a sister can be struggling to keep himself pure, to keep himself in shape, to, keep, to live a proper Christian life. But the environment does not suggest the same. Yes, the environment is trying to shape you. It's trying to allow you to permit some things, reject some things. And this is why being a Christian is becoming a little difficult. And it's so bad that we bring it to church. Very bad. Look at why it's a concern for me. It's a concern for me, not just because the systems are now like that. That we can't do Facebook and go free. We can't do Twitter and go free. We can't go on Instagram without people, you know? <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> without things happening. There is no platform where we can engage now with sanity. So as we are there, we are praying in tongues. As we are there, we are praying. Meanwhile, we are supposed to, on our own, the algorithm brings it to you. Do you know before now, People only tend to have a sight of iniquity before now. When it was the days of um, night browsing, you will have to go to a cafe, pay 100 naira for 30 minutes, sit down, and then. And things will still pop up that you will need the Holy Spirit and the anointing to close. Why I'm saying this is that things have gone haywire. And in order to help ourselves, let us leave it where it is and not be Christians that are also like that or bring this kind of cultures and values to the body of Christ. These are the last days and these things will continue. Our job as men of God is to address them from the pulpit. Yes, and if we don't address them, if we address them well and we still see that it's not working, we'll call names. We'll do what? Uh, if we call your name, you raise up your hand. Then we'll <laughs> We need to get there. This is not being wicked. This is where it must get to so that we can restore sanity in the body of Christ. If not, a pastor will tell you, ah, every, if you know things that pastors do, eh? What do you mean by that? Do you know that the requirements of serving in the house of God according to scriptures, even in the book of 1 Timothy and 2 Timothy, there are requirements for a deacon and there are requirements for bishops. Even a deacon has strict requirements. And all those requirements for a deacon, you will not be, do you know, I don't know if we have time. Let's not go there. The requirements for bishop, there's no speaking in tongues. The Bible didn't say the bishop will speak in tongues. 
The only qualification that has to do with the pulpit and the requirements is that he must be able to teach. That's all. If he's going to be a pastor, he should be able to teach. The rest is on character. The rest. You will not see, he will speak in tongues, he will prophesy, he will, the devil say pray. It was things that bother first on character, on who they were. He must be a husband of one wife. Imagine the Bible is reminding us. A bishop. What should he tell the members? If a bishop doesn't know, he should be it. <laughs> it's one wife. Stay with one at a time. Praise the Lord. All this is, to, <laughs> all this is just to make three points in this meeting. The first is that According to this scripture, a point will come if care is not taken where these people are going to creep into the church. The Bible even says that some of these brothers are going to creep in and take women on our ways. Let me tell you, there is, there, is, there is this vulnerability that happens when people come to the house of God. Nobody comes into this place thinking somebody came in with a gun. Is that true? Will you ever come into this hall and then you have it in mind that somebody would have come in with a gun and he's seated and he will shoot? You won't think about it. Just because you're coming into the house of God, there's a level of vulnerability. As much as you will not think that somebody will come with a gun, you are not going to be thinking that there will be other things that people will have in mind that are not godly. How does the apostle intend to deal with them? He says that these people will have a form of godliness. So there, is, there are people that have a form of godliness. Secondly, there are people that have a form of godliness and have the power. And then there are people that don't have the form of godliness at all. Ah, how best can I explain this? If Pastor Dave, Pastor Dave, please stand. If Pastor Dave come, okay. I'm thinking of using this brother since he's wearing a white shirt or something. <laughs> Uh, nobody's wearing suits. Okay, look at Pastor Dave. Let's use Pastor Dave. Everybody look at Pastor Dave. If Pastor Dave walked into this place and you don't know him and he's dressed in military uniform or he camouflage with boots and um, maybe just a t-shirt, not even the jacket and walking, what will you think about him? Eh? In your, if you want to rate in percentage, how many percent will you give him that he's a soldier? <laughs> but does that mean he's a soldier? Hope you know he can look like it, but he's not. The fact that he appeared like that does not mean he is. It's possible he has an uncle or a brother or his twin brother is a soldier. And he wears his uniform for evening service. Unsuspecting people we think we only know soldiers from their uniform. Praise the Lord. What if a lady comes into this place and she's wearing a white short gown and hangs a biro? Maybe a red and blue biro. Eh? You would just say she's a nurse. Does that mean everybody that appears like that can't a sister wear white gown? It means can take a form. That's what I'm saying. What that means is that by looking at a Christian, you can also, you should be able to suspect that this is a Christian. By looking. I know it is of the heart and the way we preach. That gospel is good. But men, look at the outward appearance. That's what the Bible teaches. And your Christianity is not for God. Your Christianity is for men. Where do men look? Outward appearance. It means being a believer should be evident as soon as we see you. If we see you and think you are a prostitute and think, it means there's a problem. True of us. So we should see you and say, hey, this, this sister or this brother looks like a pastor or like a man of God or a servant of God or, he's good, or whatever way. There's, 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 there's an appearance of a believer. Right? But some believers don't even have the appearance at all. 
this is not whether they are truly believers or not it's having the appearance first because having the appearance does not mean you are but if you are you should have the appearance. you are fake if you don't have the appearance just you are fake you are, you are really 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 fake there's no need to trying to find out again I'm saying all this to say that if you know believers if you're a Christian learn to maintain a form learn to do what? maintain a form a form of godliness like we read from this scripture a form of godliness is not equal to godliness but let us see the form let the form be evident am I saying you should wear um, what, do, what, what do they call that thing? <laughs> you know I'm not I'm not like that I, I like you <laughs> I won't advise you can't bring that here you won't even come to my house you have to be smart you have to look good but in all your looking good let there be a form form is important for we that are guys we might say it does not matter but if I wear it short a nice short me I prefer wearing short actually but I can't wear it again if I wear a good short and I'm strolling to Ruban at night bouncing you know the guys can say ah it doesn't matter <laughs> But it's not true. Sisters know that no way. That legs covered. Some, it was a person that told us a story about. Maybe you were there the day he told the story of one man in his compound. He was um, he had light issues with his wife, and then the husband comes out with shots in the compound. And one of the days, please sit. One of the days, the woman was not around. The man was not around. And then the other woman in the compound was talking to the wife of the man and he was appreciating the husband's legs. Say the husband <laughs> that the husband has such nice legs, beautiful legs. <laughs> My sister. <laughs> what is it not leg? Hello? Of a leg, or also? The sisters know it's not just legs. Yes. Let's not be careless about our Christianity. We must maintain a form, compulsory. Maintain a form anywhere, anytime. There are many things I would have loved to say in this form area. You know, my hobby, my, my hobby till today is swimming. That's my hobby. But now I can only swim at night. Yes. <laughs> That's the best time for me now. It has to be. I need to make sure nobody's around. I've even gone to a place where I think people don't know me. And in the pool, somebody now says, Pastor. <laughs> you know, good state. Is it Ogun? Yes, Ogun. The brother knew me from Zaria. <laughs> in Grand Bank Hotel call me pastor I say wow <laughs> there's a problem everywhere <laughs> are you all listening to what I'm saying we must maintain form please maintain form maintain form anytime anytime not sometimes all the time do your best to be in form the reason is that your Christianity is not just your Christianity. Your Christianity is for people. As a sister, be informed. Be in what? I'm not saying you mean something in your heart. No, that's not what I'm saying. You might not even be thinking anything. But just be informed. You are preaching. You are saying something. You are communicating something without knowing. Right? Secondly, having been informed, it's still not a guarantee. The fact that you are informed is not a guarantee. According to the Bible, it says, if you are informed, also have power that backs the form. 
if a nurse walks in and she's wearing that white gown, or a lady walks in and she's wearing that white gown, like I said, and it's hanging that viral, and then suddenly a baby starts running temperature, who is the first person you want to refer to in that place? It's the nurse. You want to carry the baby. Ah, nurse. Or where's your home? Expecting that the nurse beyond the form should have what? The power. There is a power component of that thing. There is a power dimension to it. That power dimension is equally important. Don't be a believer with form alone. The power dimension is what helps you to live out the possibilities of being a believer to the full. Don't be in church and be a serpent. No. Jesus already told us that we can have them as wolves in sheep clothing. Wolves can wear sheep clothing. But sheep will still wear sheep clothing. Sheep will not wear wolf clothing. So if we are believers and we are believers, let's not just be believers in, you know, in the form. Let us be a believer in character. There is a lot, a lot of things are haunting your salvation. They are haunting it. The social media is haunting it. People on the streets is haunting it. You enter Keke, they are haunting it. You go to the market, they are haunting. Everybody is haunting your salvation. Everybody. The devil is working overtime. Demons are overboard. There's a lot of intelligence they are bringing to the table. A lot of things they are organizing to make sure. I can boldly say that 90% of the brothers in this place, or everybody in this place, if you have been to the internet in this place, the chances of seeing a content that sexualizes is very high. All of us must have seen it. If you have spent up to 30 minutes online today, you might have seen it. I'm not saying you are watching porn. A content that is suggestive. You must have seen something like that today. And the people that do these things, they do it and it's not anybody's business. I'm living my life. It's not true. You are not living your life. If Broeken says that the way he's dressed is just for himself, he just wants to represent himself, he just wants to look good for himself, nobody looks good for himself. Nobody. There's no, I don't know anybody that came out from the house and they say, it's just, I want to satisfy myself. It's a lie. You're not satisfying yourself. You think this is what I would have won if I want to satisfy myself to come for service? A hey, pastor, you were there when I was dressing. You know what I wanted to wear? <laughs> if I wanted to just, if it's just about myself, I would appear like this. No, it can't be. It can be. And in case you think it's about yourself, you are deceiving yourself. It's not true. Why do you say thank you when people say you look good? And then if people say it's bad, you say, is it your business? It's myself. How is it yourself? This doesn't look like my kind of gospel. But I'm saying this because our salvation is being haunted. It's being haunted. The devil is working so hard. It's working so hard. We are, we are doing our best to keep our hearts in check, to keep ourselves in check. There are four ways of sustaining and maintaining the power of God that helps you to live as a believer. Four ways. The first one, according to scripture, is power to be. Power to be. But power to be is the power that comes upon you upon receiving Jesus. For as many as received him, to them he gave power to become. You are going to see that becoming a believer is a process. Becoming a believer is not automatic. Just like breaking out of cycles is not automatic. Breaking out of an addiction is not automatic. That becoming power are things you receive as dosage. It comes, you receive two meal today, five meal tomorrow, three meal tomorrow, ten meal. And as you keep accumulating the dosage, that's how you become strong. The Bible says they go from strength to strength. It means all the strength you need will not be given to you at once. You go from one level of strength to another level of strength to another level of strength. It says they that make an appearance before the Lord in Zion. So every day
day will appear. Every day we come, there's, a, there's an injection of strength. The measure of strength keeps increasing. And then it keeps increasing until we become very strong. And that happens with power to become. Power to become keeps working on you gradually, 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 until you become. Hello? Number two is that you need James chapter 5 from verse 16. Yes. All of us are going to need James 5. In fact, from verse, from verse 14, we're going to need James 5, 14. Can we go there? James 5. This is just an admonition. If any among you is sick, the word sick here is diseased. Diseased is D-I-S and then is. It means to take away is. And is can be taken away from your body. It means it's not just your body that is can be. You can take away is from a business. You can take away ease from a career. You can take away ease from an occupation. Do you know in 2 Corinthians, 2 Chronicles chapter 7, from verse 14, the Bible talked about healing of the land. If my people who are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, I will hear them from heaven and I will heal their land. What is sick in that context? What is diseased? It's not them. It is what? Their land. So the land can be diseased. A business can be diseased. A career can be diseased. Your spiritual life can be diseased. Your soul can be diseased. It means we have taken away the things that make for strength and stability from that place. And if anyone, let him call the elders of the church. So in case this happens to you, who should you report to? Elders. What should the elders do? And let them pray over him, anointing him with an oil in the name of the Lord. Verse 15. And a prayer of faith will save the sick. It will save what is sick. Not just the person. The sick. And the Lord will raise him up. And if he has committed sins, which is the reason why some of these things happen, especially to men, his sins will be forgiven. Verse 16. Confess your trespass. Confess your faults. That's KJV. One to another. Pray ye one for another that ye may be healed. So this is our way of transferring healing. Two ways according to the scripture. First is from the elders. Secondly is from the people you are with. You can have a brother that can pray with you. A sister that can pray with you. I've told us here that one of the things that makes Christianity Christianity is sincerity. That's just one of the many virtues that make it very strong. We won't, we won't break your head because you are sincere. No. I have weaknesses. I report. The best of us is, is tempted. If we are, unless you are not on earth. Yes. Our temptation might differ, but we are tempted. Jesus was tempted. And I've told us the, 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 the theology of temptation. According to the scriptures, you are not tempted until you have affinity for something. It is called temptation when you have tendency to fall for it. That's when it's temptation. Abi? Abi, I've explained this thing here before. Until you have tendency to fall, you are not tempted. You must have tendency to fall before you say you are tempted. Can you say I've been tempted to climb a mountain? What's my business? <laughs> have you ever been tempted to climb a mountain? Eh? What if I keep egg sauce beside you? Will you do you think you might be tempted to taste it? Why were you not tempted to climb a mountain? There must be a propensity in you to fall for it. There, that's when it is temptation. And if you have blood running in your veins, there are many possibilities you have in the flesh. Many possibilities. That if not checked, the flesh will want to rule over you. The flesh will want to be your guy many times. Many times. 
And the more you give flesh allowance, if you give the devil a foothold, he takes a stronghold. And he remains there. To pursue him becomes difficult. Sometimes do your best not to fall for the first one. In the human body, there are things we call T cells in basic biochemistry. The, the, are the biochemists, I hope we have a biochemist here. My biochemist, tap her, tap her, tap Jennifer. <laughs> there are T cells. Those T cells are called memory cells, right? If you are sick and you take an antibiotics now, and you take the antibiotics, and you're supposed to take the antibiotics for seven days, and you take it for three days, and then you are fine. Usually, you will be fine after two or three days, except in some stubborn um, bacterial infection. You might, you might even finish the seven days, and then you are still trying to recover. Right? But you took the antibiotics, let's say you took it for three days, and you got very okay. You will not see the need to take it again. Is that true? But what you don't know is that your body has T-cells. There are soldiers in your body. The job of those soldiers is to also, st- as much as you, you are trying to understand your body, those soldiers have memory. They study. So, the first time, let's assume it was, um, what was the popular infection that happens to people here? Eh? No, malaria is not an infection. Malaria is, is a parasitic um, this thing. Typhoid. Let me use typhoid, for instance. Many people might have had typhoid this year. Typhoid is a bacteria that causes typhoid. It's a bacterial infection. Right? If you took a drug that should deal with typhoid, what happens is that when you took the drug, your body generates energy to be able to fight those bacteria in your body. Those bacteria are living things. They are fighting. If you're... If, the, if the typhoid empowered your body enough to be able to stop that bacteria, some of them will die. If you don't complete the dosage, if the bacteria was at 100% and it gets to, maybe it, gets, it, it dies to 70, remaining 30, right? There is still 30% that you, you, if you had completed your medication, it would have stopped. Is that true? You know what that 30% will do? They will hide somewhere in your body and then extract a sample of the drug you took and take it to their lab in your body. They will study the, the drug very well. <laughs> so now this guy they bring, called kill us. Now this guy will go deal with them. When they understand how that thing works, they will develop mechanisms to fight it. They are able to fight it because they have memory. They have what is called what? Even microorganisms have that. They can record things. So that when next they grow from 30 to 60 to 70 and to 100, if you take that drug again, they know the drug. They, as soon as, if you are bringing the drug, they will carry, it. They, they will carry this guy out. <laughs> yes. That's how the human body works. In the same way, if you are vaccinated, your T cells, your body cells, your white blood cells now takes a sample that, you know, I've taught you that in immunization or vaccination, what you are being injected is a less virulent strain of the same organism. So if, if it's measles, we want to treat you and we give you, sorry, we want to vaccinate you against. What we inject into your body is measles. But measles with weak strain so that your body can understand measles. Your white blood cells can fight measles. They have developed techniques to be able to fight measles. So that when the real measles come, what would they do? They just carry, pretend this guy, pretend yeah, they will carry the measles and throw. No, that's that's how this thing works. If you fall for sin the first time, the devil also studies how you were so weak that you fell, and he's going to come through that route again. That's what the Bible meant. You know you don't know the devil goes to the lab. Yes. No weapon fashioned against you. It means a different weapon can be fashioned against the kingdom. A different, a different weapon can be... It's not, there's no collective weapon. So the weapon the devil uses for you might not be the weapon he will use for me. He's going to look at your grandfather, look at your great-grandfather, look at your father, and then look at you and say, okay... 
They must be short skirts. And short skirts they walk. <laughs> and then they would parade with ten. They know you have tendencies. It has been happening in the bloodline. And if your case is not, if they tie short skirt and it doesn't work, they go back to the lab. What will work? What will work? What will work? Ah! We need a sister with red lips. They will now parade the one. <laughs> Just if your weakness is in that area. This is how the devil works. And if you fall for it, he now knows, okay, this one they work. He puts it down and then he keeps improving on it. This is why if you yield yourself to, to, to sin, it's difficult to come out. Not because there's a demon yet. listening to me. I'm buying against So stay away. Do what? Stay away. Part of the ways you stay away is that if you notice symptoms, confess your faults. What? If they do me, oh, I don't die, yo. Oh. At that point, you have not sinned. You have not, you are, you are a righteous man. You are, you are a very, very, you are too righteous. You are a good man. You are better than all the people that kept quiet. Let's pray. Can we pray for two days? Can we pray for three days? Guy, I beg, pray for me a day week. Let's pray together. Sometimes you might not explain, but you should have Peter, James, and John. Just like Jesus had Peter, James, and John. People you can pray with. Friends, brothers, real brothers. If you don't have them, you are disadvantaged. Yes, because when Jesus asked Peter, James, and John to pray for him, he gave them measurements. He said, if you leave me alone, I can pray, but it will take longer. But if you, if Peter bring one hour of prayer, John bring one hour of prayer, James bring one hour of prayer, plus the one I'm going to put. Not like Jesus would not have prayed for six hours. He would have done that. But if he can make it easier, why not? Praise the Lord. Am I, am I sounding kind of this? this. <laughs> so this is how these things happen. Look for these people. And then, because you are a righteous man, when you people pray, the Bible says it makes power available. Prayer does not generate power. It makes it available. The power in this room is not generated in this room. It's not generated by... by Nepa office, ZP, power holding of EEDC here is generated from Kainji Dam. It is transported from that place to this place and availed to us. Transform and step it down. That's what prayer does. It makes power. Avail. You don't know you have power until you pray. And then you pray with brethren. You suddenly realize that there's this energy coming from your spirit. There's something stronger than the devil. Something stronger than sin. If you are struggling alone, you will think you will die. Until you step out. Oh, boy, boy, we'll pray for five minutes. Five minutes of prayer, you will look for the devil. Very, You will brace the bed and look for him. You won't find him. Are you all listening to me? Am I against it? This is the second way. What did I say the first way was? Again? I said, to them that received him, reception of him, appearing daily, and then secondly is this you confess you talk to your guys Christianity is not designed to be lived alone yes the design is not that you exist alone 